Welcome back to my channel. It's Pilar Newman, where we talk about Amazon selling, affiliate and online marketing. So if any of those two topics interest you, go ahead and hit the subscribe. All right, guys, today I have a great one for you. Um, if you are an Amazon seller and you are buying from China, you're private labeling your product there and you are shipping it out to Amazon's FBA warehouse, then you are most likely feeling the effects of the China US trade wars. There's tariffs being imposed by both countries left and right. The trade wars just seem to escalate every day. Amazon sellers are fretting about this, including myself. What do I do? What do I do? The tariffs are now starting to hit profit margins. Okay. So this video today is going to be, um, it's going to be a good one for you because this is going to tell you where to start sourcing products so that you can take advantage of what's actually going on right now with the China trade wars. Okay. Um, so normally when you look at things like this and people start fretting and saying, Oh no, there's no opportunity now. Everything's done and over and the world coming to an end. There tends to be a group of other people that say, Hey, there's an opportunity here. Okay. And this is why I have Megla formerly from global sources here to talk to you today. Um, she's going to be discussing the influx of Amazon sellers that are starting to move their purchase orders over to India. So importing from India. And I want to get this video to you right away because as of right now, it's not a large, it's not a huge amount of sellers just yet. Okay which means there is this incredible door of opportunity for you. All right. So in India, you have handcrafted items. You have items that are eco-friendly. It's, you know, these kinds of items that a lot of, you know, the U S population are starting to gravitate towards. Okay. So go ahead, grab your pens, grab your paper, um, give yourself some time to go through this entire presentation. I promise you that this is going to be a good one at the end. You're going to have some extra resources to take home with you and take a look at how you can go ahead and profit from what's going on right now. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead. And I'd like to welcome Megla. Go ahead, Megla. Hello, everybody. This is Megla Bhardwaj, founder of India Sourcing Trip. Thank you so much, Pilar, for inviting me on your YouTube channel. I'm super excited to be here. So today I'm going to be talking about how e-commerce sellers can source products from India. And let me share my screen with everybody. I've got a presentation that I have done and I'm going to go through those slides and talk a little bit about how Amazon and e-commerce sellers can source private label products from India. So here are the topics that we're going to be covering in this uh, webinar today. First of all, I want to talk about why you should consider sourcing from India. What are some of the differences sourcing from India and China? What kinds of products you can uh, expect to buy from India? And I'll be sharing some tips for sourcing effectively, as well as, you know, how to start sourcing from India. And I'll also be talking a little bit about uh, the sourcing trip that I'm organizing to India in October of this year. All right. A little bit of background about myself. So I've worked in the sourcing industry with a B2B sourcing platform called Global Sources for almost 19 years. I worked in the Philippines, in India, China. I lived in China for nine years and I'm currently based in Singapore. I've done a few events for e-commerce sellers. I organized a conference in Hong Kong called Global Sources Summit. And I've also uh, written a lot of research reports on how various products are manufactured in China and exported. So when I was based in China, um, this is actually what I was focusing on. And I had a team of market analysts work for me and we used to visit um, you know, a lot of factories and write about how these products are manufactured and exported and uh, what are the things that affect the quality and the price of the product? And that's how I got a good understanding of how manufacturing and exports work. And I've also done a lot of, uh, you know, articles and social media related to sourcing and importing, as well as visited um, a lot of sourcing trade shows in India. I sold on eBay myself and I'm currently selling on Amazon. And uh, more recently, I've started my own venture, which is... Um, a sourcing trip to India and I'm also trying to build a community of sellers in Asia called the Asian seller. 
So here are a few images. Uh, these two reports over here at the top are the types of re research reports that we used to produce. So I've covered product, uh, you know, various product categories from electronics to gifts and home, furniture, furnishings. This one is health and personal care uh, from China. And then this is gifts and premiums from India. And um, these are some photos of me at uh, a trade show recently. So this is the Global Sources Electronics Show in Hong Kong and um, the India Fair um, in Delhi. And I've also been on a lot of podcasts and conferences talking about sourcing. So basically sourcing is my thing. That's what I specialize in. Okay, so why source from India? One of the biggest advantages that, um, you know, as e-commerce sellers, you will find when sourcing from India is that there are a lot of handcrafted, unique and high end, high quality products that are available from India for you to source. And these are very unique to India. Um, they are not found in other countries. And, and a lot of these products are very attractive and eye catching, which is great for e-commerce. I mean, think about this, you know, your, uh, your customer, they're browsing through search results on Amazon on their phone. And, uh, you know, as they're browsing through, through various search results, they see this really colorful and attractive product and it, it catches their attention and they stop. I call these products thumb stopping, right? Because they, they're very attractive and they catch your attention. Another thing that you'll find is that there are a lot of indigenous styles of handicrafts and, you know, fabrics and uh, you know, garments that you won't find in other countries. So these are products that will help you differentiate your brand from, you know, all of the other products on Amazon. Also, you'll find that some of these prices, uh, some of these products command higher prices because they have a higher perceived value as they are handmade and they're, you know, considered higher quality. Um, also, you'll find that these products are typically, uh, they sell in lower volumes, but they have higher profit margins. And, um, you know, a lot of the black hatters, uh, the black hat Amazon sellers, most of, them, most of whom are from actually China, they don't like to go after these sorts of products because they like to do products that are high volume and very competitive, you know, like silicon uh, spatulas, for example, or power banks or, uh, you know, things like that. So when you're sourcing products from India, you're selling them in lower volumes at higher profit margins, but you're staying under the radar of black hatters and kind of staying away from trouble. You know, things like uh, your, your listing gets hijacked or your images are changed and things like that. Um, also, because these products are handcrafted, you know, sometimes the lead times may be longer, especially if you are developing a new product with your supplier. So just keep that in mind when you're sourcing from India. For example, if you want to source a product for Christmas, then make sure that you start working on the product, you know, in, uh, in, in April or May, if, especially if you want to develop a new design because it's a handcrafted product and sometimes um, it may take longer to produce. Another advantage that you'll find when sourcing from India is that a lot of the suppliers are willing to accept low minimum order quantities. And this is especially for handmade home decor items, um, maybe not as much for textiles and garments, because for those product categories, suppliers still need high volumes uh, to make, um, you know, uh, decent profits on those products. So typically the MOQs in India would be about 200 to 500 pieces, but I've found that suppliers are willing to work for uh, or to cater to smaller trial orders as well, you know, 50 pieces, 100 pieces. Of course, the prices may be a little bit higher for these smaller orders. Um, and maybe they're not able, they won't be able to do a lot of customization if the order is too small. Uh, they may be able to do things like, uh, you know, screen printing your logo or do customized packaging. You know, that may still be possible. But if you want to develop a new product from scratch and you have to create a new mold, you know, then they might not be able to do uh, such a small order. But I think this is very advantageous. If you want to test a product category on Amazon, uh, then this comes in handy. You can just order, you know, a small, um, a small order and then... Uh, uh, list those products on Amazon and see what kind of results you get in your Amazon PPC. And if you think that there is demand for those products, then you can go all in and, and order in higher volumes. And this is also useful if um, you know, you're just starting out and you're a new seller and you don't have a lot of capital to invest and you want to just start small. Um, I think you'll find that um, in India, the low MOQs would, um, you know, would be very suitable for you. 
Another advantage that I see sourcing from India is that India has a lot of locally available raw materials, especially things like cotton, jute, silk, marble, metal, wood, bamboo, leather. You know, all of these materials are available locally. So that means that products manufactured from these materials are very competitively priced. And you'll find that there's a lot of variety available as well. In fact, um, India is the second is the world's second largest producer of cotton. So that's why you'll find that, um, you know, there are a lot of cotton based products that are coming out of India. Um, also, you find that in China, you know, they're they're more uh, competitive in the man made materials. So for example, silicone or plastic, whereas in India, you'll find that the natural materials are more competitive. Also, I find that in India, um, you know, Indian suppliers tend to have a bit more respect for IP protection. Whereas in China, I find that a lot of suppliers, they will share your designs with other buyers or they may copy your designs and sell them online themselves. I feel that Indian suppliers, especially the suppliers that are more export focused, they tend to respect buyers' IP and buyers' designs uh, a little bit more. You know, they themselves invest in R&D and design development and they understand, um, you know, how much effort goes into this. And, um, you know, suppliers will also put your logo on their own designs and customized designs for you. That's not a problem at all in case you want to, uh, you know, make certain modifications to a design that a supplier offers. That's entirely possible. Or you might want to develop a completely new product from scratch. That is definitely possible as well. Um, another thing that you'll find is that a lot of these suppliers from India currently don't sell directly on Amazon. Whereas in China, you'll find that a lot of suppliers sell directly. So many times you are competing with your own supplier. But I don't see that happening uh, you know, too much on Amazon. Of course, uh, there's Amazon India. So, you know, uh, a lot of the manufacturers are selling on Amazon India and maybe they will expand to the U.S. Uh, moving forward. But by and large, I find that the export focused manufacturers, they prefer to focus on manufacturing, which is their expertise, and they don't want to do the marketing and, you know, selling on Amazon. Another advantage you'll find is that um, communication is smoother with your suppliers because it is an English speaking country. English is actually the second uh, official language in India. So there's less, uh, there's a, a lower chance of miscommunication when you're talking to your supplier, uh, you know, either on the phone or via email. And you don't need translators when you are visiting a factory or when you're visiting a trade show. Unlike in China, you know, in some cases you do need translators. Also, all of the contracts can be in English. When you are sourcing from China, then you need to sign, uh, you know, NNNs. Um, or it's a non-compete, um, non-disclosure, something, you know, the, the contract that you need to sign that needs to be bilingual in English and Chinese. But in India, it can be entirely in English because the judicial system in India is also in English. Um, also, another advantage you'll find is that there are no Trump tariffs on India-made products um, as of now. There was this uh, little trade issue between the U.S. and India, and there were some categories that were exported from India to the U.S. that had zero duty access into the U.S. They had preferential treatment, but now that preferential treatment has been removed and there is about a 4% import duty that needs to be paid on these products. And... Um, this program is called the general, uh, the generalized systems system of preferences, and this was an um, a trade agreement that was put in place between the U.S. and um, a few different developing countries way back in 1976. And uh, you know, uh, in June this year, the U.S. removed India from this. Uh, preferential list of countries, but it hasn't affected a lot of product categories. You know, a lot of the categories that are affected are things like automobiles or in industrial products or components. I mean, these are products that Amazon sellers would not source from India anyways. There are some categories like bags or apparel that were also on the list, but um, you know, the, the import duties that need to be paid now are not very high, it's just 4%. So it doesn't um, you know, affect the overall price of the product that much. Um, however, you know, when you're sourcing from China, there there's a 25% um, you know, tariff on certain product categories. And then there's also more recently, they announced a 10% tariff on uh, $300 billion worth of products. So 
uh, almost everything that's imported from China into the U.S. now has this additional layer of tariffs. So um, we're seeing a lot of e-commerce sellers who are sourcing products from China. They're actually moving some of the products to India now because they're getting hit by the tariffs and their, their prices are increasing significantly. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, India versus China. Like what are the differences that you'll find when you're sourcing from India and China? So first of all, what you'll find is that in India, uh, a lot of the product categories or a lot of the factories are actually smaller scale. A lot of the products are handcrafted, as I mentioned, whereas in China, there's more automated and large scale production. Of course, there are smaller factories as well, but by and large, you know, most product categories that e-commerce sellers will source, um, they're, they're automated productions and, and you know, large, larger scale production than India. And as I mentioned, there's more respect for IP in India, whereas in China, you'll find that the IP infringement, infringements are quite rampant. One drawback of, uh, you know, when you're sourcing from India is that there are fewer product categories available to source um, because India does not manufacture all product categories. Unlike China, you know, where you can source anything and everything, India really specializes in certain product categories and, um, you know, those can be competitively sourced from India. But for example, electronics, you can't really source electronics products from India uh, currently. You'd have to go to China for those. So just keep that in mind when you are considering, you know, sourcing from India. Um, uh, first of all, see if your product category is competitively manufactured in India. Do a price comparison. Um, of the product from China and India and maybe even other countries, you know, there's Vietnam, Philippines, um, maybe even in the US, like some product categories you might find, uh, especially because of the tariffs now uh, on Chinese made products, you might find that sourcing those products in the US may actually be a bit more competitive. So yeah, look at all of the different options that are available. Another difference you'll find is that there's not much info available about how to source from India, you know, online. Whereas uh, for China, there are a lot of blogs and YouTube tutorials and experts talking about how to import products from China. But I think that this is um, actually an advantage for people who are willing to, um, you know, make the effort to learn how to source from India because the, the barrier to entry is much higher for sourcing from India currently. Uh, I think increasingly there are more Amazon and e-commerce sellers going to India and sourcing from India. Um, however, you know, for China, it's very easy for everyone to start sourcing. They just go to Alibaba or Global Sources, contact suppliers, you know, send an inquiry and uh, place the order and it's done. Whereas in India, suppliers are more difficult to find. And um, you also don't know what kind of products are available and, you know, how manufacturing works. It's just uh, a higher learning curve. Another difference you'll find is that um, a lot of the logistics service providers and suppliers in India are currently not very familiar with Amazon FBA requirements. Whereas in China, uh, there are a lot of service providers, you know, logistics and of course the suppliers as well are very familiar with FBA requirements in terms of labeling and shipping and, and all of those things. So I think that currently India is maybe where China was three or, two, three or four years ago in terms of uh, um, understanding FBA requirements. But again, I mean, having said that, there are, uh, you know, logistics service providers that are familiar with the requirements. So you just have to make sure that you're working with the right company. And in terms of working with your supplier, you may have to educate them and give them very specific guidelines about labeling and, you know, uh, how, to, how to do packaging and things like that, according to Amazon's requirements. You'll also find that in India, the infrastructure is not as developed as it is in China. So this can sometimes be a challenge because uh, you might find that your delivery lead times are sometimes longer. Maybe, uh, you know, for example, during the monsoon season in uh, certain cities in India, there's a lot of flooding and, um, you know, even like the f a lot of flights are canceled or maybe, um, uh, you know, roads are blocked and, and traffic really comes to a standstill or ports may be affected. So this is something that you want to keep in mind when you're sourcing from India, you know, uh, just build some buffer time uh, in your delivery lead times and um, anticipate, uh, you know, some problems or issues related to logistics or deliveries. You'll also find that uh, labor costs are actually lower in India than they are in China. In fact, uh, 
uh, production costs overall have been increasing in China over the last few years. And this is one of the reasons a lot of the big brands and retailers have been moving some of their production to other manufacturing hubs. You know, for example, a lot of the apparel manufacturing now happens in Bangladesh or uh, Vietnam or India. Um, there are also a lot of shoe manufacturing facilities, you know, in Thailand, Vietnam and India as well. So this is one issue that, uh, uh, you know, you, you'll find increasingly in China, labor costs and production costs are increasing. Also, both countries have very large domestic markets. So in case you have a brand that would appeal to the domestic markets, um, you know, you could sell into um, India and China. However, I feel that it's relatively easier to sell into the Indian market because it's English speaking. You know, there's Amazon India, for example. If you're already selling on Amazon US, you could also um, list your products on Amazon India. There are, of course, certain guidelines that you need to follow to open an account um, on Amazon India. For example, you need to have your own company, you need to have a local partner and things like that. But once you've gone through all of that initial setup, there is, um, you know, creating your listings, for example, is very easy. You can just you know, copy your current listings and photos from your Amazon US um, account to your Amazon India account. Whereas in China, uh, the language is a big barrier, right? Because um, all of the marketplaces are in Chinese and um, it's, it's, it's really difficult to sell into that market. Okay, so here is a comparison and um, this is actually uh, from Gary Huang who is um, who runs this blog called 8020 Sourcing and he had published an article where this um, buyer had done a comparison of bags manufactured in China, Vietnam and India. So you see over here that if China is zero, then they found that producing the same bag in Vietnam was 11% cheaper than it was in China. And the same bag produced in India was 37% cheaper than producing it in China. So overall, you know, the, the wages, uh, the um, production costs of products are relatively lower in India than in China. And, uh, you know, if you add the tariffs and everything, you know, production costs can be pretty high in China. So that's one, uh, you know, that's another reason to consider sourcing from India, uh, especially if your product is competitively manufactured in India. And if there are, um, you know, highly developed supply chains for that product category. Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about the products that you can source from India. So first of all, the biggest category, I think, for uh, Amazon and e-commerce sellers is home decor and gifts. There are a lot of products available that are made of different natural materials, such as metal, wood, ceramic. Uh, jute is a huge product category. You know, you'll find like jute um, decorative products, wall hangings, uh, jute bags, jute rugs. Um, also cotton, of course, and in glass. Another category is home, kitchen, and tableware. So you'll find a lot of uh, stainless steel products and also copper. India specializes in copper. So for example, copper water bottles, copper mugs, um, and then furniture, furnishings, and made-ups. So again, furniture, mostly made of wood, and you'll also find furnishings like tablecloths, cushion covers, um, bed, bed spreads, uh, bed sheets, you know, those kinds of uh, products and rugs. I found that uh, there are a lot of interesting, you know, carpets and rugs coming out and they're already selling very well on Amazon. For example, there are rugs that are made out of jute and cotton. And uh, these are, you know, very colorful area rugs that are actually uh, already quite popular. Fashion. So you'll find like costume jewelry, apparel, fashion accessories, such as scarves, belts, uh, and then some types of footwear as well. Textiles and apparel, uh, again, huge category, especially cotton. So um, you have, you know, denim also and silk and wool as well. And then leather, I find, is a growing category from India. And in fact, there are a lot of um, suppliers in India that are currently investing and in expanding their production of leather products. And this is a really fast growing uh, category um, from India. Also, you'll find sports equipment like cricket or tennis rackets, footballs. Uh, those have been manufactured in India for quite some time. 
And then eco-friendly products, you know, this is a huge product category and again, growing very fast. And um, there's a lot of R&D and research happening in this product category in India. So for example, there was this uh, company that I recently came across. They are producing biodegradable um, disposable tableware, like, you know, um, plates, cups, things like that. And these products are made from sugarcane waste. So they are eco-friendly, biodegradable, and um, they are not harmful to um, to humans, right? So I think this is a very huge product category and it's also very popular on Amazon currently. If you're more adventurous, you could consider food items such as tea, coffee, spices, rice, or lentils. Again, a lot of variety available and um, um, also already, you know, there are, there are companies that are exporting these products in very high quantities um, to various countries around the world. And this is an opportunity for e-commerce sellers to also, uh, you know, customize or private label some of these uh, items. Um, another category that's not mentioned here is Ayurvedic products. So these are um, health related products that are manufactured from, um, you know, either plants or other types of natural materials and these are very popular uh, overseas i mean um, in the u.s as well okay i wanted to highlight that india has a lot of local indigenous unique styles of fabrics that i find um, can be applied in various product categories uh, and in various products so each state in india in fact has its own style of weaving a fabric or um, you know it's it, it, the the textures are different or the embroidery the style of embroidery or the patterns are different so um, I think this is something that's uh, that e-commerce sellers can explore you know a lot of these fabrics can be used in products such as uh, tablecloths or uh, aprons or cushion covers you know things like that so a lot of unique products available uh, I think in terms of the fabrics that are available in India Okay, so uh, let me share a few tips for sourcing effectively. Um, one of the biggest things that you'll find is that in India, suppliers really, um, you know, they, they, they like, if they like you, then they will go out of their way to help you and uh, give you better payment terms. And um, they, they like working with, uh, you know, with their hearts. They say that in India, suppliers or, or um, you know, businesses, they work with their hearts. <laughs> um, so it's very important to build trust and relationship with your suppliers. And um, also, you want to make sure that you understand your product really well so that you come across as a serious buyer. And in fact, this is applicable to China as well. You know, um, if, if they think that uh, you're, you're a newbie and you're not going to, you're most probably not going to be, you know, placing an order uh, they might not take you very seriously. Also, you want to make sure that you work with your supplier as a partner. And, um, you know, for example, don't negotiate excessively on the price and, um, you know, work together with the supplier to develop, uh, you know, new products. For example, if you are working on, on a specific product and you find that the price is too high and uh, your market or your consumers are not really accepting the price, so talk to your supplier about it and work with them to, you know, reduce the production cost of that product. So tell them, uh, okay, this price is not working for my market. You know, what should I do? What, what do you suggest we do? Can we change the material a little bit without affecting the quality? Can we improve on, uh, can we change the functions or the features or the, or the shape or the colors or, you know, what can we do to reduce the, the overall production cost of the of a product. I mean, this is just an example, but the important thing to note is that you want to work with your supplier as a partner so that they are profitable as well. I mean, they are running a business. So you want to make sure that, you know, um, they uh, are also able to run their business profitably. Also, there are things like, you know, if you place repeat orders with the same supplier, they will trust you more and they will, uh, you know, give you better terms. They might not charge you for samples uh, of new products that you develop. Um, also, make your payments on time. And uh, as I mentioned, don't negotiate excessively for low prices. Um, you know, there are other things that you can <clears throat> negotiate for. Another thing that I find is that visiting the factory makes a huge difference. I mean, if they see you face to face and if they um, are able to, you know, shake your hand and, 
and uh, see your body language and all. It, it really makes a huge difference. It just takes the relationship to a next level. So if possible, especially if you're uh, placing a large order, it's really important to visit the factory, um, get a good understanding of how products are manufactured. And you'll also, um, you know, see things from their perspective. You'll see why certain things are a certain way, you know, the way they manufacture the product, the, the, the assembly lines, the equipment that they use. I mean, it just, um, um, you know, opens your eyes and, and, um, it, it just shows you things from their perspective. Also little things like, you know, wish them on festivals, ask them about their families. I mean, these are just little ways to, um, to develop a rapport with your supplier and uh, build a relationship. Another thing to note is that hierarchy is important when you're sourcing, uh, you know, in business in general in India. So um, Decisions are usually made at the highest level, usually by the owner of the company. So if, if there are any important decisions that need to be made, for example, if you want to negotiate the price or delivery time, then always make sure that you're talking to the owner of the company. Um, also, a thing to note is that face-to-face -face int introductions are usually done according to rank. So if you are being introduced to a group of people, make sure that you greet the person who is the most senior in terms of rank or in terms of age first, and then you talk to the other people. Another thing to note is that you want to be respectful uh, when you are, uh, you know, dealing with Indian suppliers, because the concept of losing face, which is also uh, prevalent in China, it's also prevalent in India. So you just want to make sure that you don't criticize people in public, for example, and, um, you know, you praise in public and criticize in private. That's something to keep in mind. Another thing to note is that suppliers don't like to say no, and this can be tricky. And this is actually, um, you know, applicable in China as well. Maybe it's just an Asian thing. I think in some ways, China and India are very similar uh, culturally. So um, Indian suppliers, you know, sometimes they, they, they like to keep all their options open. They don't want to close the door entirely. They, want, they like to make decisions based on specific circumstances or certain situations. And they want to, uh, they want your business, right? They want your business. That's the most important thing. So they, they will try to figure out a way to make things happen for you. For example, if you want a certain material that they're currently not capable of manufacturing, they'll find another factory who can do that and then, uh, you know, supply that product to you. But so if, if there are certain requirements uh, that you have, you know, as far as your product is concerned, um, you can be very specific about the questions that you ask the supplier to, um, you know, delve deep into what's really going on and um, to find out, you know, if the supplier has the capability of manufacturing that product or not. So, for example, you can ask questions such as, you know, okay, what equipment do you have and uh, what's the capability of that equipment? Um, uh, you know, how many... Uh, how many products can um, the assembly line produce in a certain uh, certain month or, you know, how many machines do you have for a certain thing? Um, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, assembly lines do you have for a certain? I mean, the, the thing is that you want to make sure that you d dig deeper and ask very specific questions to find out really what's going on and uh, if the supplier really has the capability to produce that product or not. Okay, negotiating. So very similar to China, uh, suppliers in India do expect you to, to negotiate, um, you know, on prices or other things as well. So if you're not negotiating, then uh, in some cases you might be leaving money on the table. And of course, you don't want to negotiate for like really small orders of, you know, like 50 or 100 pieces when you're just testing a product. But once you start scaling, and especially when you're developing your, your own product and you're investing, you know, quite a bit into that product, that's when you start negotiating with your supplier. Uh, but don't negotiate on price upfront. You know, first talk about the quality of the product and the functions and features and the packaging and all of those things, certifications. And then, I mean, price is really the last thing that you want to talk about uh, once you're com confident and comfortable with the product that the supplier is uh, 
is capable of producing. Another thing to note is that you should, have, of course, have a target price in mind based on um, you know what your competitors are selling. Um, you should have a target price for how much you want to source that product for. However, don't tell your supplier the target price, right? Make sure that um, you know you know the target price, and then if your supplier's price is way higher than that target price, then of course you know that th that supplier won't work for you, or you need to negotiate that price with the supplier. But but when you negotiate price, um, ensure that the supplier doesn't compromise on quality because this happens very often in China and Asia. You know, you say that oh, I want this product. Uh, you know, reduce the price by fifty percent from four dollars to two dollars, and then the supplier says okay, fine, and they will maybe change the material or change some function or feature that will affect the the quality of the product. And um, you know, they say in Asia, you will really get what you pay for so just keep that in mind make sure that the uh, when you negotiate on price the, the the quality and the specifications of the product are not affected at all also you, you uh, apart from price there are a lot of other things that you can negotiate for so for example payment terms um, if you can get uh, you know credit from the supplier if you can reduce the uh, amount of advance that you have to pay the supplier before they start production of your um, products you know that's something that you can consider also delivery lead times maybe you can negotiate for shorter delivery lead times um, or packaging you could probably ask them to include the packaging in the product or um, in the price that you pay or maybe you know ask for certain other features or functions um, in the product to be added for the same price um, or maybe lower MOQs. So, I mean, just keep this in mind. Price is not the only thing that you can negotiate for. There are a lot of other different things that you can negotiate for, um, whether you're sourcing from India or China. Okay, so how to, so how to start sourcing from India? So there are a couple of things that you can do. First of all, uh, you know, just Google. If you, if you have a specific product category in mind, just search for you know, manufacturers of X product India. And a lot of times you'll see that, uh, you know, many suppliers have their own websites, even though they're not updated and you won't, you won't find the, the, their latest products on their websites, but you know, you'll still be able to get an idea of the types of products that they manufacture and you'll be able to get their contact details. Um, the other thing that you can do is search for suppliers on various B2B websites such as Alibaba, Global Sources, and India Mart. These are the three main websites. Now, Alibaba and Global Sources, most of the suppliers on these websites are from China, but they do have suppliers from India and other markets as well. What you need to do is use the supplier location filter on these websites to search for or to find suppliers from India. Now, India Mart is a local uh, B2B supplier directory and um, a lot of the suppliers on India Mart actually focus on the domestic market. So just be aware of this. When you look for suppliers on India Mart, you, uh, you might have to vet suppliers a little bit more closely to make sure that they are export focused suppliers because you'll find that there are a lot of wholesalers, trading companies, importers, you know, all sorts of um, suppliers on India Mart, whereas Alibaba and Global Sources, they have um, most of the suppliers on these two websites are export focused suppliers. So that's, I think, a big difference between, uh, you know, Alibaba, Global Sources and India Mart. Uh, India Mart is, of course, bigger. They have more suppliers uh, from India. Um, but again, there, there are too many suppliers that focus on the domestic market and it becomes difficult to identify export focused suppliers. And this is another thing to keep in mind when you're sourcing from India, you want to make sure that the supplier is export focused. It's, it's an export house because, uh, you know, India is a huge country. There are 1 billion people. There's lots of demand for products locally. And so there are a lot of manufacturers that um, make products only for the domestic market. But when you're importing products, especially for the U.S. or Europe, you don't want to source from these product uh, from these manufacturers because they may, might not be familiar with um, the certifications or the quality standards of these export markets, or the designs that they have on offer might not be the designs that are popular in the U.S. or Europe. Whereas export-focused manufacturers, they have their own research and design teams, 
and they uh, they keep themselves abreast of uh, design trends in overseas markets and their their products and their designs reflect the preferences of buyers in these overseas markets right and then they're of course more familiar with the certifications and quality standards of products sold in these markets another thing you can do to find suppliers is um, contact export promotion councils in india so um, most of the major industries for example leather or handicrafts or gifts or textiles they have export promotion councils these are government organizations that are tasked with um, promoting exports in that specific industry so you can search for these uh, councils on google and then um, you know reach out to them by email sometimes they have supplier uh, lists on their website or you can just uh, email them and then they can send over a list of suppliers to you um, also you know when to use a sourcing agent so i mean you can either source directly from suppliers or you can use a sourcing agent now um, sometimes what happens is that sourcing agents don't want to work with you if your order volume is too small because it doesn't it's not very profitable for them because they usually charge their commission is usually a percentage of the order value and if your order value is very low then um, it's it's not worth their time and effort you know to to work with you um, also a lot of these agents have a minimum order value that they will work with you know say like five thousand dollars or or ten thousand dollars it varies from agent to agent usually bigger companies will have um, higher minimum orders that they will work with so if you're starting out the first thing that you would do I, I would suggest is to just search for suppliers yourself right go to Google Alibaba global sources and try to find suppliers uh, yourself if you're able to find a good export focus supplier um, then you know start talking to the supplier and place a test order a small test order directly with the supplier um, you should consider using a sourcing agent if you are unable to find a supplier for that uh, for the product that you want to sell that's one situation when you want to use an agent or when you're scaling your product when you're scaling your um, you know sourcing from India or you are um, you start sourcing in higher volumes then you want to start using an agent as well because then they can um, you know monitor your products and your production very closely they can work with the supplier to make sure that um, uh, there are no quality issues and, and the um, production is done on time on deadlines also if you are developing your own product um, or if you're sourcing products that um, you know that that have a lot of different trends for example fashion items um, they tend to have new designs every seasons right um, or if you're sourcing something like bags that are very um, that have you know very design heavy products then you can use a sourcing agent because the sourcing agent would be working with a number of suppliers and they'd be able to send you the latest designs that are on the market right because if you're just working with one supplier uh, you're limited to the designs that that supplier is offering you whereas a sourcing agent they're working with so many different suppliers and they know what are the new latest designs that are uh, being released by you know various suppliers so they can always tell you uh, that hey this is a new supplier or this is a new design launched by you know this other supplier and um, you wouldn't know that if you're sourcing directly with just one supplier so that's another uh, you know scenario where you will you you might consider using an agent if you're doing fashion related products or products that have um, a lot of uh, that are design uh, focused but if you're sourcing products that are more like a commodity you know then you probably don't need need a sourcing agent you can just uh, source the product directly from the factory and in those cases you know you would uh, hire a third third party inspection company to do a pre shipment inspection before the product leaves the factory right whereas when you're sourcing via an agent usually the agent will also do the quality control uh, you know for you at the factory also want to talk about packaging now um, it's important to note that there are a lot of options available for packaging uh, in India if you're doing you know like boxes or um, 
uh, you know, cardboard boxes. There are um, packaging factories or there are companies that specialize in packaging. So usually your supplier will work with a packaging company to offer you different options or you could you could separately work with a packaging supplier and um, you know design the packaging and, and develop the packaging with the packaging supplier and then send over the, the boxes or the packaging to your supplier um, you know and then get them to uh, put your product in the packaging so a lot of options are available in in terms of um, you know packaging where uh, so that is not an issue at all when you're sourcing from India also um, in terms of shipments you know there are um, different options available similar to China you can do air freight or sea shipments uh, you can do LCL which is less than contain container load or you can do FCL full container load you can also do uh, express shipment or courier so all of the different options are available and um, you know it, it really depends on how large your your order is you know sometimes if it's a very small order then it just makes sense to uh, ship it by courier However, once your order size starts increasing, you know, air freight or sea shipments, I'm seeing that most, um, you know, Amazon sellers who are sourcing products from India, they use sea shipments uh, because um, overall, this is the most cost effective uh, method of, uh, you know, shipment. And what I find is also that sometimes um, when sellers uh, are running low on their inventory in uh, on Amazon, then you know they do maybe a part of the um, a, a portion of the products are actually shipped by courier, and then the rest are um, you know shipped by sea because of course sea shipments are much slower. Okay, so here are some resources available in case anyone's interested in learning a little bit more about sourcing from India. So there's an ebook that I've written. Uh, it can be downloaded from this URL, indiasourcingtrip.com forward slash ebook. I've also got a Facebook group on India Sourcing. In case you're interested, uh, most welcome to join this Facebook group as well. I try to do live webinars every um, Friday evening, uh, Eastern Standard Time US, uh, which is Saturday morning in Asia. So I try to do weekly webinars with uh, various experts in the group. Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this sourcing trip that I'm organizing in October uh, of this year. So um, this is basically a very unique learning, sourcing and cultural guided tour to the Indian Handicrafts and Gifts Fair in Delhi. So Delhi is in the northern part of India and it is the capital of India. So this fair is actually one of the most important export fairs in India. It has about 3000 exhibitors. Uh, and all of the exhibitors are export focused. In fact, this fair is not open to local people. It is only for importers, overseas importers, or um, you know, buying houses or buying agents that work with importers. So locals are not allowed to attend. Um, find that um, you know most of the products on display are actually the designs and all are based on the preferences of US and European consumers. So, uh, you know, that's something that I really like about this fair that it's really export focused. So the trip dates are October 14th to the 20th of 2019. And here are some of the product categories that are on display at the fair. So you'll have houseware, tableware, kitchenware, bathroom accessories, lawn, garden, furniture and accessories, home furnishings, carpets, fashion jewelry, bags, apparel, a bit of apparel, not too much. It's mostly, uh, you know, home decor items and um, metal, wood, uh, all of those. And you'll find a lot of eco-friendly products too. So cane, bamboo, uh, natural and eco-friendly products, stationery, and some bags, uh, luggage and leather goods as well. So what are the benefits of attending this sourcing trip? So first of all, I think the biggest advantage is that you can source innovative products or unique products that other Amazon sellers are not sourcing. And that is something that will be that you that will help you, you know, differentiate um, from other Amazon sellers. So I was at this fair earlier this year um, and I didn't see a lot of Amazon sellers sourcing products that there was this one group from Australia but apart from that there was there was hardly anybody uh, you know sourcing from Amazon so I think this is an opportunity for 
sellers to source unique products that others don't have access to. And then um, we're also providing a lot of content related to how to source from India. So uh, we're actually organizing a one day conference where we talk about uh, all the different aspects related to sourcing from India. So, you know, the pitfalls to avoid, how to uh, find suppliers, how to verify suppliers, how to negotiate with suppliers. Um, what are the issues that you need to be aware of in terms of logistics, quality control, payment terms, and um, you know a lot of uh, different aspects related to sourcing. So it's almost like a crash course in sourcing from India. And then you know just have fun with like-minded sellers. One of the biggest advantages of attending a sourcing trip like this is that you spend time with um, other sellers who are you know in the same situation or have experienced what, what you are experiencing and you can learn from each other and share your experiences. Um, also, you know, India has a lot of rich culture. So uh, when you're on this trip, you'll be able to experience some of that culture. We've organized a trip to the Taj Mahal, which is uh, one of the seven wonders of the world. And we're also organizing a cultural show exclusively for our group. So get a bit of a taste of the Indian culture. So here are some of the... Uh, the coaches who are traveling with the group. We have about 10 coaches. Uh, They're from India and from uh, the U S and Australia. And all of these coaches are, uh, you know, have experience either sourcing from India or they have experience uh, with marketing and things like, um, you know, Amazon PPC or product research and product validation and things like that. So we're going to cover a range of topics starting uh, you know, even before the trip, we're going to have like almost four webinars before the trip where we're going to be talking about how to do product research and how to validate products when you're at the show in India. Okay, so in case anyone's interested, um, you can find more information about this trip at indiasourcingtrip.com. And you can also email me at info at indiasourcingtrip.com. All right, so that's it from me. Thank you very much. And um, thank you once again, Pilar, for inviting me. And it was uh, really nice to um, you know, present this topic to your audience. Thank you very much.